welcome back. Today we're going to talk about reverse engineering, specifically functional analysis. Okay, functional analysis. After the product has been selected, a non-destructive non functional analysis is performed. Three things happen. The product's purpose is identified. Um, observations are made to determine how the product functions. And these observations are recorded in detail. And the system's inputs and outputs are listed. So make sure you make note of these three things right here. The product's purpose is identified. Observation, observations are made to determine how the product functions. And the system's inputs and outputs are listed. We're going to talk more about those inputs and outputs. But first, let's talk about the purpose. The purpose of a toothbrush is to clean the teeth and gums to prevent tooth and gum decay. Water and the cleansing paste are used in conjunction with the brush. So in here, we're talking about the purpose. They're identifying the purpose of this toothbrush. The second thing was the functions. Observations are made to determine how the product functions. Function. An annotated sketch with all visible components are labeled and is created. I guess it has to be created, then it's labeled. A hypothesis, which means a guess, is devised to describe in detail the sequential um, operation or function of the device using the sketch as a reference. Uh, so the sketch is made, and they're going to start making um, observations or hypothesis as to um, how it functions. The black box system model. A black box systems model is used to identify what goes into and out of the product in order to make it work as a system. So this is what we're talking about right here. This is the black box model. There's some type of input. This is the product does its thing, and this is what happens because of that. The black box is used to represent the product's internal components or process which are deemed unknown at this point. If you go back to this um, electric toothbrush, there's a lot of stuff that's going to happen inside the toothbrush that we don't know. We're using this black box to represent that. All right. So what happens here? Functional analysis example. We have these inputs, all right? What does the operator do? All right, they do a hand motion. They put the toothpaste on. They use water, all right? Um, they use some energy. Other things could be they push the button, all right? It goes in. What happens when we, for example, I'll, I'll list another one here. And we'll try it again. push button the machine all right in this case the toothbrush so when you push the button that's the input the machine what comes out the bristles move all right so here's an example of when you do something hand motion when you move the hand motion up and down it cleans the teeth and gums when you put toothpaste on um, what does the machine do? The machine does its thing, and you have waste product. You, it cleans the teeth and gums. There's all these outputs. All right. Redraw the table below in your engineering notebook. Identify the system's inputs, intended, intended product function, and output in the table below. So, for example, I'm gonna. This is what we're gonna be doing in our homework today. Um, inputs. What does kid do? Pushes car. All right. Product function, the toy part. Well, this is the wheel and axle. What part, what does part do? It rolls. All right. So what I've done here is I've listed an input. What is the kid going to do? I've then listed what part specifically relates to that action. And then what does the car do? What is the byproduct of that? So it's the rolling. It rolls. All right. um, 
So we're going to spend some time today in class uh, using this table here as our input, our product function, and our output.